Aloha, my name is Lisi Yang and I am the founder of Journey to Fitness. I specialize in self-care and posture transformation. Today we're going to talk more about, we're going to talk about how, uh, breathing, the different type of breathing and connecting with your breath. Most people are holding their breath and they don't even realize it. And in every exercise uh, we do, we require us to really concentrate on our breathing. So let's talk about different type of breathing. There's three different type. The first one is chest breathing. The average person is just holding their breath or they're breathing very shallow through their chest. Especially if they're a smoker. And that puts a lot of stress in the neck and, and, and the chest area and causing tightness in the upper body. The second type of breathing is stomach breathing. When we're sleeping and relax, that's how we breathe. If you ever watch a baby sleep, it's very calm through the belly. But the third type of breathing that nobody's talking about is rib cage diaphragm breathing, 360 breathing, where you're breathing to your rib cage and expanding that rib cage because the diaphragm is right underneath it. And that allows all the air to go into every cell and, and hydrate all your organs and your tissues. But most people are, are not used to breathing deeply, so they're forcing their breath whenever someone tells them to take a deep breath. So for you to learn how to breathe and reconnect with your breath, start off with one nostril breathing. So you just close off one nostril and then slowly inhale. And feel and hear your breath going in and slowly exhale. Nothing forced. Gently inhale and gently exhale. Try that one more time. Gently inhale and gently exhale. Try the other side. You might have a stuffy nose, that's why it's good to do both sides. You slowly inhale and you slowly exhale. Deep breath in, it's calm, exhale. One more time, inhale and exhale. So that's how a breath should feel if you were to breathe with both nostrils. But eventually the goal is to move into two nostrils where you just breathe in and breathe out. But if you find yourself forcing it or it's very shallow and it's not coming from your diaphragm, go back to the one nostril breathing. It might take you weeks or even months to get to the point where you can breathe deeply to both nostrils. Now once you're able to breathe deeply with two nostrils, you want to work up to another type of breathing called box breathing. So the Navy SEAL is taught this type of breathing to calm themselves whenever they're in a situation that, that they need to pause and focus on what their next um, options are if they're in a dangerous situation. So it's called box breathing, where you inhale for four count, pause for four count, exhale for four count, and pause for four count. So this might be challenging, but try it. So you're gonna inhale for four. So inhale, two, three, four. Pause, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four and pause, two, three, four. So we require a lot of concentration to control that. So let's try that two more times. Inhale, two, three, four. Pause, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Pause, two, three, four. Again, one more time. Inhale, two, three, four. Pause, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, pause, two, three, and four. Now, let me show you two more type of breathing that a little bit more fun and you can do it with your grandkids or even at your dinner table. So all you need is one cup with some water, not full, maybe one third of the way filled with the water and a straw. And what we're trying to do is blow some bubble. I learned this from a speech therapist to improve your breath. 
you trying to blow bubble as long and consistent as you can. When you can't blow anymore, you just pause and you take a deep breath in. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how. So the blowing the bubble is really great because it gives you a visual feedback that you are breathing out consistently. Most people, when they start doing this type of exercise, the bubble goes very inconsistent. Either they pause and they go really intense and the waters are spitting out of the cup. So this is a fun way you can do it um, during each meal, um, just a couple times, and you can improve your breath. It's a fun way um, to work on strengthening the breath. Now the next one is blowing a balloon. If you're not breathing correctly, um, it's very difficult to get the balloon be, um, blow out. So make sure that when you do blow that you pinch the balloon after you blow out each time so you don't lose the air. So, so I'm pinching it. Take a breath in. And that's when you know you're breathing correctly. And you can release the air and do it again. So two fun things you can do, especially with your grandkids at home. So this is a segment for breathing help, breath of health. As um, mentioned earlier, it really helps with immune system, improve your immune system, improve the quality of your sleep. A lot of people are getting sleep apnea, and I really believe it's, it's um, part of not breathing deep, deeply and um, fully and, and throughout the day that the body is under a lot of uh, stress that's affecting their quality of sleep, but digestion, your energy level, and automatically when we breathe deeply, our postures are better. So just that alone um, helps you improve your posture, which allows you to have more energy throughout the day. Thank you for joining me and I hope you have a safe, be safe. Aloha.